Hi everybody and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different and I don't think any other stamp duty expert has ever done. We're going to be answering questions posted on Reddit about stamp duty and related issues. So let's get down into it, shall we? One of the questions that I've spotted from a few months ago was stamp duty and legal fees on a house that fell through and the question was this that we recently had the purchase of a property fall through due to the sellers pulling out and this was fairly close to completion but no contract so before that exchange. We've now received an invoice from our conveyancer for over £8,000 including stamp duty, abort fees and various other things. Is this normal? Well it's normal if you were bought a transaction to have to pay legal fees and reimburse a solicitor for it or a conveyancer for any disbursements, searches and stuff like that that, that have been paid out. But no stamp duty will be due if you haven't completed a purchase. Over £2 billion a year is overpaid on stamp duty, with up to a quarter of purchasers paying the wrong amount. From millionaire developers to residential homeowners, anyone may be affected by these errors. Contact us today to see if you have overpaid your stamp duty and owed a refund from HMRC. So I'm quite surprised that the conveyancer would ask you for this. It may simply be an error on their part, but you certainly shouldn't be paying stamp duty on a transaction that has been aborted. Here's another interesting one. Uh, it's headed partner's dad bought second property in my partner's name. Now looking to buy our first property, do we lose first time buyer's relief? And the detail of the question is that some years ago, presumably to save on his own SDLT bill on buying a second home, my partner's dad bought a second home and registered the property in her and her sister's name. My partner are now, are now hoping to get on the property ladder for the first time in London. And the difference in SDLT for a first time and a second time buyer for the value we're looking at is £5,000, so it's no small sum. Does this having this property partially in my partner's name disqualify us from the reduced rate for first-time buyers? The property we're buying will be in both our names and co-funded. She was not financially involved in the purchase of her father's second home. Has he unknowingly, or knowingly, screwed us to save on his own tax bill? Well, unfortunately, the answer is yes. If, when your partner's father bought that second home, he bought it in your partner's name together with her sister, then she will have previously owned a UK property and won't be eligible for first time buyer's relief. Now, that being said, it may be that her and her sister entered into a declaration of trust that they were only holding it as nominees for their father, in which case she won't have owned a property before and you will get that first time buyer's relief. Uh, the fact that you're co-funding it means that unfortunately unless you can arrange to have the purchase in your sole name or indeed have your partner go on as trustee for you that's about the only way you would get yourself inside first time buyer's relief i mean it's perfectly clear if you've owned property anywhere before you're not eligible for first time buyer's relief and it's amazing how many people are doing favors for family and in some cases friends and then later finding that it's damaged their own chances of qualifying for a stamp duty relief on their first real home and here's another interesting one and funnily enough i i see this quite a bit uh, the question is heading have i screwed myself with stamp duty let's ignore the mental image that that uh, brings up but let's talk about the story long story short a year ago my wife and I moved across the country for jobs we sold our house moved into rented while we found somewhere and got to know the area last year a property came to our attention as an investment already with tenants so we decided to purchase it as a rental with some of the funds from our house sale now we've found a house and we think we want to purchase for ourselves but now wonder if we will have to pay increased stamp duty as it's a second property i have read that main residences get special treatment but i doubt i'll be that lucky well the news is is you are that lucky the rules on main residence say that if you have disposed of a former main residence within three years of the date of purchasing your new main residence, then regardless of whether you own other property, you do get main residence relief. So you've not screwed yourself, uh, but you probably need to get detailed advice on it and probably not from a conveyancer because they tend to uh, not to ask the right number of questions to get to the right answer. So you're not screwed, don't worry. And lastly today, second home stamp duty. 
I've become a reluctant landlord as a result of having to keep my property for, to facilitate an onwards purchase. Not enough time to get rid of mine. I don't hate the idea of being a landlord entirely, it is just this particular property is a bit of a thorn in my side with ongoing snagging and maintenance gripes. I understand that I can get the difference in stamp duty back if I sell within three years. My question is, if I sell this property and buy another, an easier buy to let, how does the second home stamp duty work? Will I get the stamp duty back from the first and have to pay it again on the second? Do I pay the difference? Is there a minimum time that would have to pass between selling one second property and buying another? Edit, I'm talking England here. Okay, so you've got this property, you've lived in it, you've moved out, turned it into a buy to let. It was still your main residence. If you now sell it, go and buy another buy to let. You've still got three years from the date of selling the first property if you decide to buy a new main residence and you can still claim main residence relief. The fact that you used it as a short-term buy to let doesn't kill the idea that it was your main residence. If you wanted to make certain of the disposal of this property whilst it's a buy to let, you could consider selling it to your own company. That qualifies as a relevant disposal. That will mean you don't own any extra properties and when you do buy your new home, you will automatically qualify for the main residence relief. So that's about all we've got time for on this video. We'll be looking down Reddit regularly, finding some interesting questions and uh, popping up more of these videos with short answers. If you like the video, please click like and subscribe to receive further updates. If you want to know more about stamp duty advice and whether recovering overpayments or taking advice on a new purchase, click on the links in the description below. I've been David Hanna. This has been Cornerstone Tax SDLT Refunds. Thanks for listening.